take good notes. 10 1 on ratio, proportions, and similarity. You guys only have three chapters left 10, 11, 12. I know, crazy. What's 11? 11 is sine, cosine, tangent. Sokotoa. 12 is all circle stuff. Okay? Are we done with proofs? Nope, no star proofs. All right, who's defined ratio? Good. Who's defined proportion? Very good. How many have found similarity statement? Similarity ratio. We did that stuff back in chapter 2. Okay, I believe page 103 is a good place to look. Um, what is a ratio again? Yeah, Carson? Good, a comparison of two numbers by division. And usually you see it maybe if you're saying a ratio of 1 to 2 or you may even see that written as like 1 to 2 like that. Okay? That is ratio. How about a proportion? Grace? Good. When you said two ratios are equal, so you could say like one to two is equal to. It's another ratio that one to two is equal to. Two to four. Two to four. Good. What's another? Hey, yeah, say three to six. Okay, four to eight. Hey. So this is a proportion. When you set two ratios equal, you have a proportion. Okay? What is the similarity statement? Similarity statement. Okay, kind of like a congruence statement. You could say like triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF. Now, we don't have those triangles to reference, but ABC is similar to triangles DEF. The similarity statement just states two different figures that are similar to each other. Okay? So, for instance, for those of you who have started number one, when we say triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF, that actually tells us some different things about that shape that we'll get into here in a minute. But that's a similarity statement. Okay, similarity ratio. Chase? Of the ratio of lengths of corresponding sides of similar polygons or solids is a similarity ratio. Good. So the ratio of the lengths of the corresponding sides of similar polygons. Okay, so these two figures are similar. Okay, these two triangles. Similarity ratio would compare the two sides. So I actually have my statement a bit. It should be ABC. It should be FED. So I have this backwards, but let's fix that real quick. Triangle FED in this problem. Okay. So if we have corresponding sides, AB corresponds to FD. Similarity ratio would be a 15 to 20 ratio. And we know 15 to 20 actually reduces to, does that become? Three to four. Okay, a similarity similarity ratio of three to four. Okay, how many remember doing this back in chapter two? Kind of did some quick similarity statements there. All right. We also know on similar similar figures, all angles, all corresponding angles are congruent. The angles don't change. The sides do. Okay. So in example one here, it asks, what is the similarity ratio? Three to four. All right. Any questions there? All right, everyone read the comment. Come oh, on, that's good. That's good humor right there, not the not the ice cream kind, but dude, good stuff. Do you get it? All right, explain it to your neighbor. I mean, really, this is a good one. That's good stuff, man. What's the decimal point like? Is it at the top like? No, decimal point in a number, man. Yes, I know, but like, is it talking about the point on the pyramid? No. Oh. What do you mean it's not even funny? I don't get it. It's not funny. Oh, all right, hold on. Unbelievable. I'm not even going. All right, number two. Go ahead and do number two, please. 
Figure out your similarity <laughs> ratio. Write your similarity statement, please. Okay. All right, someone new, give me the similarity statement. Yes, Cameron. Okay, so XYZ to MNP. Everyone agree? Okay, and Cameron said it's two thirds. How do you get two thirds of the similarity ratio? Oh, someone that had. Yeah, Maddie. Good job. Okay, reduce that up. Very good. You can use any two sides. In fact, in, in, in order for this figure to be similar, all the sides should reduce to two-thirds. So 16, or all corresponding sides, the ratio of them. 16 to 24, okay? 8 goes into that twice, 8 goes into that three times, and uh, 14 to 21. All of those reduce to two-thirds. That's how you figure out if a similar if a figure is similar, okay? You have corresponding, congruent corresponding angles, okay? And the corresponding sides all have the same similarity ratio, in this case, two thirds. Any questions there? Should be a terribly difficult day today. All right, let's take a look at number four. Everyone take a look at number four, give it a go. You may need a ruler. If you don't have a ruler, there's some amazing rulers over there. Okay, now, if I could have your attention up here, th this is something that I could say, well, I would measure up here and show you how to do. However, a nice lesson in similar figures, this is similar to yours. However, it's enlarged, okay? And it's enlarged twice. It's enlarged when I copied it onto this paper. Then it's enlarged again as you guys are getting, seeing it on the projector, okay? So it doesn't it's not going to work for me to measure it. So I'm going to rely upon your, your measurements. All right? So what are the actual dimensions of the living room? Okay, well, what, what do we measure this length using a ruler? Chase? 12 feet. 12 feet? You measured 12 feet in your well, book? I measured, like, uh, it was 3 fourths. 3 fourths? Three fourths? Three All right, that sounds easier. Okay, 3 fourths of an inch. Now, I never write my fractions like that. I just don't know why I did that. Okay. All right. What's this one? 1.25. Okay. One and a fourth. Five fourths? Five fourths. I'm going to put five fourths. Yeah. Okay. One and a fourth, five fourths inches. Okay. Well, one inch is 16 feet. So, how do we figure out what the actual dimensions are? How would we do that? Oh, someone else hasn't participated yet. Yes, diamond. Um, you multiply the fraction by 16 So if one inch is, it, is to 16 feet, so if we're comparing inches to feet here, you're multiplying the fraction. So is this, so can I take 3 fourths? Do you put 3 fourths? Yeah. Okay, 3 fourths is to x. How do I solve a proportion? I'm, I'm getting to diamond's answer in a roundabout sort of way. Got them set equal to each other. How do we do that? Cross multiply. So we get 1x equals. Okay, so you guys are all zoned out, about five or six of you, so figure it out. All right, what do we do? Yes? 16 times 3 fourths, which is 12, and you get 12 feet. How many agree? Yeah. Okay, now, you guys, the whole reason I have you set it up as a proportion rather than just going, well, just multiply by 16. Because mathematically, you're not sure exactly what's going on on that. Okay, you're just saying I just multiply by 16. I say why? You're like I don't. I just do because, you know. Yeah, Roy. Sure, you could say x over 16 equals equals what? 3 over 4, just 3 over 4, 3, 3 over 4, just like that? Yeah. Okay, and so why are you doing that? Yeah. 
It, no, I know it works, but the in in math, guys, the when we go, yeah, let's do it this way. Let's have a reason why we're doing it that way, though. Okay, otherwise, otherwise, you're you start asking questions like, can I do that? I'm not sure even if I can do that. You have to be able to justify your reasoning on it. Okay, so this does work, right? We get four x equals forty-eight. X equals twelve if we cross multiply. Why does it work? Dude. Yeah? Because 16B is the base, right, for everyone in. And if you think about it as in like, so if the scale factor is 3 fourths in this case, the x would be 2. My mind just makes sense. My words. Um, what are. Well, let's let's kind of go. You have the right you have the right thought. What what's what's the sixteen represent? It represents feet. What's the x represent? Is that inches? Okay. So so this this right here is representing what are what one inch is worth right okay yeah, yeah. so this is number of feet I guess if maybe I should write it over here so we actually see it a little better okay the when we're looking at our fraction this is number of feet to number of inches in other words it's our scale you can think of this as our scale does that make sense like we're using this right here so really, what is our denominator on this one? It's not 3 fourths. 3 fourths is the numerator. It's, it's over 1. Okay? Because 16 feet is to 1 inch, as x feet is to 3 fourths of an inch. Okay, that's, that's what you're comparing. Okay, so legitimately, 3 fourths divided by 1 is 3 fourths. That's why it works. Okay, if, if this said 2, that wouldn't work anymore. Okay, you would have to have a 2 down here. Does that make sense? Okay, know why you're doing it. Don't just let it become, well, it's like the magical math, dude. Like I just do it and it works out and poof, it's awesome. I mean, math is pretty sweet and magic is pretty sweet. Math magic is amazing, especially when you use it to pick your brackets like I did. Okay, however, you don't want that to be how you do your math. All right, questions? That's going to kind of come into play on what we're doing right here. This is page 480, 499, 1 through 10. If AB is equal to 3 fourths, which of the following must be true? All right, work with your groupies. You get 10 minutes. Go. Hey, pause for a minute. Guys, we never finished this problem. What, what, if this is 12, oh unbelievable. What's this? This was 20 feet. I don't want to spend any more time on it. What's our actual area? Area equals 240 square feet. All right. I wanted to make sure you get the answers there at least. Okay. But we don't want to spend any more time on that. Let's go on to this. Here we go. All right. We're halfway there. For those of you still struggling, here's a hint for you. Start by cross multiplying. 4a equals 3b. How many of those? How many of those have that proportion? Or that? Once you multiply them out with that proportion, how many give you that equation? Definitely this one. I hope. Okay. All right. Go ahead and keep going through them. When you guys come up, you have to show your work and explain why you got it. Number two, two of you from that table come on up and do number two. Cameron, you're all by yourself. You get number three, man. Number four, back here. Number five, six, seven. All right. Off you go. We'll go in order. So number two comes up and then three and so on. Wait. Hey, one, one group at a time. So they're going to explain. Yeah. It's all like all of us. All right. Good work. 
Okay, be a good listener, please. Okay. I can't even because that one is true. Okay, we got false because uh, three A is not it's not three A to four B is not same ratio as three A to four B. Four A to three B is the really true ratio, so you can't switch the numbers around like that. Good. Okay, four A to three B. Good. All right. Very good. Number three. Give him a hand. Though. The ratio is set out, A equals 3, B equals 4. So A equals 3 and B equals 4. And A, 3 divided by 3 equals 1. B, to 4 divided by 4 equals 1. So 1 equals 1, so it's true. Let's see how we did that? Yeah. You may, have, you may have to show that a little, little different. Why don't you actually put the numbers in there? That's a good route, a good way of thinking about it. So since this is set out, you got A equals 3 over b equals 4. So plug in the numbers, 1, 1. Anyone else look at it like that? That's pretty smart, yeah. And since a is on top, a is 3. Since b is on bottom, b is 4. Okay, and if you plug those in for a and b, that works out. Very good, nice work. Want to write true by it? Give him a hand. Here we go. Okay, who has number 4? Yes, you guys are number four. Oh yeah, so this one is just be the wait. It's no, because that's b over four, and then this is. Do you over cross a. multiply or do you substitute? You could cross multiply, or you can substitute either way. Well, if you cross multiply, it would then be four a equals three b, which is correct, and that's the same as that. Okay, so cross multiplying gives you four a equals three b, which is the same as that, mm, which makes true. it true. And if you substitute, does it work as well? B is four, and a is three. You get four thirds equals. Both ways work. Very good. All right, give him a hand. Well done. <laughs> Lucky number five. Can we figure it out who is number five? Oh, we are. We are. Okay. We are. You guys are out. I'm just standing up there. They're already here. They're four. Oh, my God. 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 Oh, my God.
if we put in this ratio, if we put 6 and 8, that's still true. Everyone agree? Okay. However, right here, if we put 6 and 8, that's false. Right? 6 times 8 is not equal to 3 times 4. You only need one example where it's false. Very good. Well done. Give him a hand. All right, number seven. Who has seven? Do you guys have seven? All right. Give it a go. Set. You start getting really fun with these ones. All right. Okay. What do you guys think? I don't know anymore because, you know, like, yeah. Try cross multiply. What does that give you? Multiply. That would be. Oh, jeez. What is that? Multiply it, then it's four, and then three plus B, and then B times three plus four. I'm so confused. Now. Try it. So let's let you guys. I'm gonna help it out on this one. Try it. Has everyone done seven? Okay. Mm -hmm. I want everyone to cross multiply on seven right now. So you guys can show it right there. That would be four and parentheses. I'm gonna steal this chair. Yeah. Well, you can use it. You can't like take it. I'm gonna take it real quick. Take it all your papers. <laughs> It would be, um, I don't want to write because I have really bad hands. You should write it. I don't have good hands. It's like four. So you hit the chair and she has to write? <laughs> well, I, I know. Right. This is so <laughs> not fair, <laughs> Haley. <laughs> that doesn't seem right. <laughs> okay. So it's, um. <laughs> okay. So it would be four and then A plus B equals B. Yeah. Right? Right. Yep, right. that's true. Yeah. So distribute the 4 now. 4A plus 4B plus 4B. Okay. Now simplify. Everyone oh, have that's that? 3B. What am I doing? 4A plus 4B equals 3B plus... Oh, no, that would be 4B. Yeah. Okay. 4B. Okay? So <laughs> combine your like terms, simplify. Keep going. Okay, so 4A plus 4B equals... That'd be 7 Okay, everyone got that so far? That's 4B. 4A plus 4B equals 7B? It's true. Okay, that is true. So yeah, did it, it is. You, it was 4A right. equals 3B okay. is true? Yeah. yeah. Oh. See, it was Yeah, right. Anna, we love algebra. Uh, true. Okay, true. Very good. Well, we were right. We were we doubting were right. ourselves. Don't doubt. Don't be doubters. <laughs> Because on the last one, it said if you have like six and eight, that wouldn't make any sense because it wouldn't work. Yeah, well, it's different when we got it into ratios. Okay, here we go. I really don't like Number eight, who says true? Who says false? Eight, true. False. Secret agent, take your headphone out. True or false? Yes, very good. All right, we got it? 3A plus 3B equals... 7a, so when we cross multiply, right? I distributed 3 right away. 7b, or 7a, excuse me. Okay, we subtract the 3a over, we get 3b equals 4a. That is true amundo. Okay. What is true? Number 9, who says true? Who says false? You got to vote. You have to have an opinion, man. You can't take someone else's opinion. Who says true? Who says false? It is your right in this country to vote once you're 18, but in this class, once you're 12. Okay? Yeah, so if 12 year old comes in here, we let him vote with us. Okay? Who says true 9? Who says false on 9? Who says true on 9? Who says false on 9? Justify to your neighbor quickly why it's true or false. That is, that is true. How many of you said true? Yeah, like everyone says true now. Okay, true. Okay, number 10, true or false, who says true? False. Number 10, 
this is 6b. Well, first of all, do they all reduce to 3 fourths? I guess that's the easiest way. Yeah. Yeah. 3 fourths over 1 is 3 fourths. 6 eighths reduces to 3 fourths. Everything reduces to 3 fourths. 3 fourths. That is true. All right. Any questions? Okay. Let me give you your assignment. Your assignment when you get it today is going to be the mixed side. Okay. That's what it looks like. So if you want to start looking at it going, oh, I know the answer to that one, you can. <laughs>